let's think about depth versus cloth time, which we measured, water flowing from a cylinder, and we measured that on the second day of the governor's school. Uh, so we're familiar <coughs> with that graph and with some of the aspects of that graph. Uh, one that we're not familiar with is its relationship to the four-plane graph. Well, the relationship turns out to be very simple. If we get a good contrasting color here, uh, extend this graph down to the point where it becomes horizontal, that's the point, of course, where the depth ceases to change. And that's, uh, well, that's the point at which depth ce ceases to change. Nothing more to say about that. Now, if I take that point to be the origin of a coordinate system, didn't need to extend it down that far, but we'll live with that. And then I simply reflect the graph across the x-axis. In other words, every point of this graph, this point is this far from the x-axis, so I locate a point equally far from the x-axis at the same y-coordinate. And this point, I don't know how well I'm actually doing this, but okay, so we get a reflected graph, and I intended to draw this graph in the contrasting color. Okay, now, if this is the depth versus time, and let me not take up your time. Didn't want to take up your time while I wrote all this on the board, so I wrote it off camera. But if this is your depth versus clock time for the water flowing from the hole in a uniform cylinder, where the hole's at y equals zero, then of course you would have another x and y axis over here somewhere. Then putting a new x and y axis here and reflecting this graph across the y axis, uh, the orange graph that we have here, forples. That's simple. You can check this. I'm not going to check this on the board. You have data for uh, the depth versus clock time. Um, you've created that graph. You could flip that graph over and trace it and see if you don't get a four-plane graph. Okay, so I don't know if this graph forples. Let's see. Here's an x value. Let's double that x value. Okay, come up here, come down here, cross here, cross here, one, two, three. That's pretty close to four-plane. Now, does it four-plane from here? If I double this over to here, uh, is this height going to be four times this height? Well, I doubt it since I just kind of drew that um, without any kind of real guidance. Okay, I know the graph looks about like that. It's probably not that far off, but I doubt that I really hit the four-plane behavior properly. Now, something else that we often do during governor's school, didn't get to do it this time, but there's a reason why this graph forples, and that is that the outflow velocity turns out to be proportional to the square root of the depth above the hole. Now, the outflow velocity is also proportional to the rate at which water exits. Um, and that's fairly easy to measure. Outflow velocity is not difficult to measure either uh, if you use the fact that the distance followed by an object is, uh, or the time required for an object, sorry, the distance an object falls is uh, going to, that that distance forples with time as we saw uh, previously. The connections for this reasoning, the reason it's gra graph forples is because uh, the outflow velocity is proportional to the square root of depth relative to the hole, which is equivalent to saying that the flow rate is proportional to the square root of y, which is equivalent to then saying that the graph slope is proportional to the square root of y, which is y to the one half, <coughs> which is incidentally the p equals one half. So uh, the y ratio, when x doubles, 
is two to the one half, which is approximately hang on a second. Okay, I did pause to calculate the square root of 2, which everybody should know is about 1.414. <coughs> but because in the process of talking about this, I got to automatically talking, and for a second I lost track of what graph this was. Okay, so anyhow, p equals 1 half. Uh, this is a graph of the slope. The slope is proportional. The, the slope of this graph is proportional to y to the 1 half. So this would be on a graph of slope versus y. Okay, the graph of slope versus y. Not this graph, but a related graph. Okay, now we have these connections. Then a miracle occurs, and y forples when x doubles. And the miracle involves a trapezoidal graph. and actually involves trapezoidal graph of the slope versus y. In an example that I'll probably go ahead and do, it's accessible to you, but it's several steps and takes us a little ways away from our purpose here, which is to illustrate some applications of the four-plane graph. They're all over the place. <coughs> 